bridging over to maybe some of these roots uh, some thousand years before this, at least, right? Um, we are handing over the word to Sara Rajabli from Azerbaijan, who is a social entrepreneur and business psychologist. And she will tell us a bit about the madrasa system in the Islamic Golden Age, uh, the first hundred years of Islam, um, with an explosion of intellectual inquiry and building that transformed the Middle East and eventually the world and was the only bed for real knowledge and thriving of intellectual um, worlds for some time. Um, this is going to be really interesting. Over to you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone for organizing this event. It's a great honor for me to be here. And today I will be sharing my insights from the research I have been doing for the last four years about also history of Azerbaijan. I have been working on the book uh, in terms of researching social entrepreneurship traditions in the history of Azerbaijan. So Azerbaijan was a part of Islamic Caliphate since seventh century. So Azerbaijan was definitely influenced politically, economically, culturally. So definitely this mattress educational system was also um, influencing on our intellectual life. So uh, shortly about madrasa systems, that the first madrasas, the, the special school systems, if we can call it in the modern concept, it was created in 8th century. So it also developed the highest literacy rate in Middle Ages in Middle East. So thanks to this system, uh, they could cultivate responsible citizens and also create special places for scholars, for philosophers, for theologians to exchange their ideas, to have some important discussions. And also uh, the main unique points about the matter of the system was mainly focusing on individual characteristics of each student. So the students, they had the freedom of choices for selecting the learning process. Just imagine a system where you are going to participate in lectures of one philosopher, of one scientist, and the next day you are going to listen of the lecturer with completely opposite way of thinking. So the students, they could develop philosophical mindset and critical thinking. They had the choice to listen and also to observe different perspectives about the reality. And thanks to translation movement, what is the translation movement? The alumnus of this matter of the system they got questions themselves about very important issues in their community, about global issues. And in order to find some solutions, they decided to learn new languages and also to translate the works of Greek and Roman philosophers, philosophers from India, from China, and also to bring these new ideas and new perspectives to, uh, to their own educational system in order to learn more about different perspectives of rational sciences as well. So this uh, educational system was serving for a higher purposes, for cultivating responsible citizens who have been thinking about serving to the welfare of the community and society. So instead of raising the people who could be easily manipulated by the politics, they had a um, they had these basics and fundamentals in terms of cultivating people who could actually influence the culture, the intellectual, and also the political life of the country, of the society. So in the curriculum system, they included, uh, also they didn't separate subjects into religious and secular, rational sciences, so they could also show the interconnectedness between the different subjects in order to shape the systematic view of the reality. So also this matters the system could create the culture of creating the houses of wisdom, where they could also develop um, different libraries and also the places for important discussions between each other. So what are the main similarities with building system? Actually, definitely it created the culture of discussions and definitely it was uh, there, there have been a huge transfer of knowledge from different geographical regions about different perspectives. So the alumnus of matters and systems, they have been given important questions, right questions to themselves and to the environment. And in order to find the answers to these questions, they have been uh, going for searching for knowledge from different geographical regions as well. So also they have been thinking about developing manual skills. So they have been also developing not only intellectually, but also developing different manual skills. And also it cultivated the culture of bringing innovations and change to the community. And just imagine of one student, they have been studying in Madrasa in Baghdad. They have been thinking about bringing some innovation, which could also create the impact 
for the people in Andalusia, in Spain, in other uh, different regions of this caliphate. So it created also the global mindset of creating positive impact. So the main subjects taught in Matrasa system, it definitely included the religious subjects, if we can interpret in modern ways. So because at that time, people, they didn't consider actually Islam as a religion, but as additional tool for developing themselves. So as we are currently learning different sciences, different perspectives in order to develop ourselves, they didn't consider Islam at that time as a dogmatic, way of thinking in order to impose their own opinions on others. So they learned something new from the Islam. They started to think critically about everything expressed in the holy books, in other books, and they started to question themselves in order to find solutions. And they developed empirical methods for developing different sciences as well. So they created personally as the basics of matrix uh, curriculum system. Mainly it was about the mathematics, logic, and also philosophy. So philosophical way of thinking was uh, very important in order to cultivate uh, responsible citizens as well, in order not to think only about the personal interest, only thinking about personal um, incomes and so on and interest, but also thinking about a win-win situation for creating this culture, bringing something good and something better for the welfare of community as well. So there are some um, stages of ego development according to Islam. So uh, ego is called as nafs uh, in Islamic philosophy. So it starts from the um, being a very dominant, being very arrogant and also behaving based on the instincts. And in the next ego development stage, People, they are thinking about being a part of very powerful system, thinking outside of themselves, outside of their interests, and also surrendering to the universe, surrendering to everything that's happening, but at the same time, also thinking about keeping this balance uh, between surrendering to the universe and also bringing something valuable from themselves, from their own potential. So the last uh, stage of ego development is becomes about complete selflessness. So being Muslim in the Islamic golden age was meaning reaching the complete self, complete the nafs al kamilat which means that I am living my own ego. I'm living all dogmatic thoughts I have been, um, I have been maybe um, manipulated maybe by the society, by the family or different other factors, by the politics. So the main goal of the matter system was inspiring citizens to reach the complete ego development stage by giving the necessary tools for shaping the systematic view of reality. So matter system includes the culture of debates, culture of discussions, and also they gave academic freedom for students to select the lecturers, to select the subjects they want, and also to focus on the individual characteristics. And um, opportunities to, uh, for experimental learning. So it was also inspired by the, um, the lecturers to experiment everything and to think critically that have been told by the lecturers, that have been told by the literature they have been um, learning during this matters system and going for the solution by themselves, going for the experimental and um, experimental learning and research. So it also gives the accessibility for poor people, poor students and orphans, they gave free spaces for stay in Matrasa in order to have an access to education. And also it developed a strong philosophy for students about the environmental protection as also in Islamic philosophy, it was necessary and it was also cultivated among people uh, that protecting the environment is very important for our personal development as well. So also, Thanks to this matrix system, after two centuries of the uh, start of the matrix system, the philosophy of Ahism was developed, especially for starting Anatolia region. So definitely it also included on the developing the ethical entrepreneurship among people. So being a good person was the most important according to this philosophy. And transparent cash management was also very important in order to manage a sustainable enterprise and also trade is just a way of serving to people, but serving to people shouldn't be as a 100% commercial purpose for entrepreneur. And also the main principles of Ahism in entrepreneurship was consisting of having the social responsibility. So majority of enterprises, 
and uh, solo entrepreneurs uh, in that time, they have been including the social responsibility and also serving to the welfare of community and society as the main mission for the managing enterprises as well. And as a result of the Madrasa system, a lot of scholars and philosophers has been developing these theories and they could bring some innovations and a huge change, not only on the Middle East, but also um, across the globe, because thanks to the um, theories, thanks to the experiments and the research, it also um, started to include the basics for developing new solutions in developing new scientific perspectives. So this, um, actually was very important for me while researching different philosophers that I want to include also this sentence by Ibn Haidham, who also uh, started to develop the concept of experimental and um, research methods for developing the scientific approach, that if learning the truth is the goal, if um, is to make actually himself as an enemy of all that he reads and attack it from every side. So this philosophical mindset, thanks to this matter of the system, was developed among a majority of scientists and philosophers in order to attack these different perspectives, the theories they have been learning during the educational system. I have been questioning myself, actually, why actually this high level of ego development stage, if it was a priority, what was the main value, it actually impacted very positively on different communities during this time. Why actually it collapsed? It was thanks to the efforts of al Ghazali, one of the founders of Sufism and skepticism. So he developed the series and also he wrote the book about the inheritance of philosophers where he radically criticized the previous uh, philosophers and scientists who actually started to develop the series uh, around the uh, philosophies of Greek and Roman philosophers. And he started to deny rational thinking, logical thinking, and mainly he started to promote the way of thinking of developing the face over the philosophical mindset, over the um, critical mindset. So this book later was used as one of the ways of propaganda um, in the arms of political leaders, of religious leaders. So that's why after this, this uh, 13th century, especially after the attacks of different empires and later of colonialism, this system, Madrasa system, the main fundamentals of Madrasa system, it started to decline its focus on critical and philosophical mindset as well. So here um, in the last slide, I want to conclude with the expression of Ibn Khaldun that government is an institution which prevents injustice other than such as commits itself. So thanks to building system actually, thanks to integration of the building system and also going back to the roots of our history, we can achieve this level where the government as an institution can prevent the injustice itself. Thank you so much for your attention and it was my great honor to share these insights with you. Thank you.